let's do it. Okay, so Marin, uh, well, we know each other for, for quite a long time now, but maybe the people listening to the, the podcast also know you, so maybe can you introduce yourself a little bit and explain your, your journey and this ma magic world of rigging and they can even things like that. <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, thanks, Mikel, for uh, inviting me. It's uh, I have been listening to almost every episode so far, so it has been really interesting. Um, so yeah, my name is Marin Petrov. Uh, maybe my story is similar like others you have heard um, in the industry. I watched Toy Story, and basically that's when I decided, okay, this is uh, really something... I want to do in the future. Uh, the problem is back then uh, it was very, very hard to learn the skills. So I, I became self-taught. Like I, I know you did that as well. Uh, it was extremely hard when there was almost no resources and uh, nowhere to learn from. <laughs> Uh, but slowly I made some short animations on my own. Um, then I started working in the VFX industry after showing my demo reel. And I stayed in the VFX industry for like almost 10 years, uh, mostly in Bulgaria where like different studios, uh, like we we worked on movies, commercials, uh, that kind of stuff. But my passion has always been, you know, animation and feature animation. Um, so after working in the VFX industry, um, mostly as a generalist, although I really wanted to be character animator, I found I have more technical skills than... Uh, than actually, <laughs> than, than being, being a good animator. <laughs> yeah, I, I hear you. I hear you. I feel you. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I mean, I you you know you have to embrace your strengths and uh, weaknesses yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, so I kind of learned more about rigging. Uh, I became better at this. Um, you know, started doing extensively only rigging. Um, and 2009, if I remember, yeah, 2009, uh, me and my family moved to New York where I started working for uh, Blue Sky Studios. Um, it has been amazing. Uh, that was my first studio where I could actually do feature animation. And I learned a lot there. The team was great. Um, and yeah, it was amazing. But after a few years, few years there, I kind of, uh, how can I say, a few come like, I started thinking about how studios work, um, why most studios have the same org chart, if you think about it, like they're organized the same way. Um, also being more technical, at some point, uh, you realize that uh, certain problems that exist in the studio cannot be only solved by uh, by technical solutions. <laughs> Even if you write uh, perfect software or pipeline tools, sometimes you have uh, this set of problems that I call, I don't know, human problems, where you see that by uh, having a better culture in the team, you you might have a better outcome at the end of the day. Um, so this prompted me to ask a lot of questions about like how studios are organized, why they're organized in a certain way, and to start thinking about making my own studio, my own company. Uh, and that led me to co-founding two companies. One was a VR game company called Hack and Paint. Uh, the other was... Um, a software platform, a cloud solution for uh, visual feedback called RGB Notes. Um, unfortunately, Hack and Paint didn't succeed for various reasons. I mean, we can discuss them and um, and whatnot. But uh, RGB Notes later on got acquired by uh, maybe 
the people listening know the company. Uh, it's called Nimbo Collective. So they acquired us. Uh, we became part of their team. Um, and later on, Nimbo Collective was uh, acquired by Amazon. So now our product is part of the Amazon Cloud, which uh, I definitely didn't ever expect it to happen. But this was an interesting <laughs> journey so far. So that's, uh, in short, basically, you know, like what I did until now. That's great. Um, yeah, and well, today, uh, we was talking before to start recording this, we're going to uh, tackle two topics that uh, we thought it's uh, really interesting and there is not that many information out there, especially in the this area of, uh, let's say, rigging and tech anim, that it's like yeah. team management and team building. I think these are topics that, um, yeah, can be useful for many people. And also, I think you have a lot of experience and expertise on this area that also I'm interesting to to hear because um, me as a rigger uh, supervisor, it's mm. I mean I'm learning. I'm still learning a lot of things. Yeah. And yeah, I I always eager to exchange. Uh, information and experience and an anecdote also with other people who had similar experience and and maybe yeah. yeah learn something new yeah exactly i mean i just wanted to mention something here which i also started that was one of the questions i started asking myself mm -hmm. uh which was okay we as technical people riggers or what like it doesn't matter where uh, which department you're from but how do you kind of grow in uh, in this uh, in studio environment is uh, by showing your expertise in your technical skills or your technical knowledge right and then you get promoted and uh, that's fine uh, but somehow uh, the, the skills needed to lead a team are completely different uh, skill set than the skills needed to uh, solve technical problems, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, and I was like, why is that? I mean, I have no expertise in like management and I get promoted. Okay, that's fun. I lead a team. Uh, but now looking better, back at me and like what I did many years ago when I first got uh, promoted to lead, uh, lead a team was how crappy I was at the job. <laughs> Now I see it, but before that I was like, well, I'm doing pretty good job, you know, like, like everyone else, uh, I yeah. was uh, thinking I'm good, but now I see I wasn't. <laughs> and yeah, that's, that's, that's one thing which prompted me to say, okay, why, why we don't look at uh, other skill sets rather than just, you know, the technical knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with that. Uh, I, I have. I mean, from my experience, I, I I had a few like experience or uh, before becoming like a rigging supervisor. Like back in Spain, I owned my own studio for for two years. That was yeah. like a crash course, <laughs> like really <laughs> crash <Yeah>. crash. <laughs> because that's I, how we learn. Yeah, it was like I it was myself like. It started like I, I tried to to convince a friend to to start the company together, but I ended up doing it all. Uh, uh, I mean, I I started by myself, um, mm -hmm. and I, the, it was in two years we grow from like me to fourteen employees plus me, so fifteen. Oh, wow! And um, it was in two thousand four. I was. 20 i mean uh i, I know any any bad, bad experience of management or anything and yeah I, I learned quite a lot of things um and i did a lot of wrong things like really a lot yeah <laughs> I, you cannot imagine well i i you know not only the in the team management thing but also like as a business uh person I, <laughs> well i i Basically, I, I I did really well, and then I I crashed the company in in matter of months, like really badly. <laughs> uh, and then I had like 
other like in other companies like a, as contract uh like some responsibility like managing people uh but i th i don't think i i didn't do that well back then probably i i was i mean lack of experience and i think i was a little asshole back then myself <laughs> so a lot of experience <laughs> like in life also <laughs> was lacking there so um yeah that's something that comes with the age i guess <laughs> but but yeah, but but you can uh, look back on yourself and kind of you know think about what you did right, what you didn't do yeah. right. Uh, yeah. That's hard to do when uh, when you're on the spot. Like it's much easier to look yeah. back in the past and kind yeah, of see. exactly. And I hope now with uh, what I'm doing now, I I hope in a few years look back and say, and say oh, I didn't do that bad. Could be better mm -hmm. for sure, but it was not like terrible. <laughs> but yeah, hopefully we we can improve this today. <laughs> so let's see. Yeah, let's let discuss. So what's required to yeah. So first, uh, because we want to talk about two topics today, like team management and team building. So I think it's it's related to build a team mm -hmm. work that works like like well like with uh i don't know like a, a well trained uh, team like a, maybe like a soccer team or something that they need know each other and they they were like a real team helping in mm -hmm. when the people lacks uh, in some of the abilities and it's, it's excel in other abilities and how the between the team they know each other and they work together like as a unit that it's uh, co cohesive and yeah. and uh, yeah it, and it works you know and that's a like I, I understand that's like when you mean like team building it's not like just hiring the people and throwing in a in an office the, the people it's more like this kind of building thing and then when the team is built or it's working well but um, yeah it needs to be managed and I, I think there is I mean, management can be in a lot of levels, I think. Not only like manage the, the people tasks, but also how you manage the workflows or pipeline or the, the task yeah. itself internally, no? That's... Yeah, exactly. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's quite interesting. You drew the uh, kind of a contrast with the, the soccer team or any sports team in that matter, because I really like that... Uh, that idea that the good teams and you kind of you can feel it like when you're in a good team or a bad team when you're in a good team you kind of feel it's like a really like a sports team you can rely on each other's strengths uh you know each other's weaknesses and yeah the basic thing i required there to building this level of you know th this culture thing uh, is at the base of it is the trust between uh, the team members and how do you build trust uh, well that's uh, a little how can I say uh, it's not visible uh, but there are some rules that you can think about when uh, when doing it for example um, you cannot have trust between the team members if you don't have vulnerability or uh, if you have watched uh, Brené Brown, one author I really like, she talks about uh, having this vulnerability uh, and basically what that means is uh, if you make a mistake, you're coming up uh, to your team and saying, okay, I fucked up, I screwed up. Uh, um, and then the team, knowing that uh, you did and kind of you you did a mistake the, you can mm. rely on them not uh, yeah. not like attacking you or any any of that but yeah. uh, but accepting you as you are that, that's the that's the main idea yeah i think that's um uh, yeah like if you have like a, a manager or like supervisor or whatever the title is like someone who takes responsibility and every for me everybody that it's in my team I'm ultimate responsible for the 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 output of this the team and in terms like if we 
for instance uh we are late on a delivery it's my mm -hmm. it's my responsibility i have to 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 see that coming and not like no you cannot point anybody and and say like because like uh this this like you know blaming other people it's 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 bad management i mean that's not and i i i don't know in spain we used to say in it's in english it's like a brown dispatcher you have uh -huh. <laughs> you have brown eaters and brown dispatchers and when you have like <laughs> a brown dispatcher as a boss means that he never fails it's just if there is a problem it's someone else's fault and that's that's terrible when yeah. that situation that's, yeah that's not a yeah, I mean, then how do you, if you have such manager, how do you even trust them? Like, that's not no. possible. No. So, you know, um, yeah, you're right. You have to build trust between each member in the team, but that includes, uh, you know, the supervisor as well. And yeah, maybe we can, maybe I can share my screen and yeah. we can kind of draw some some ideas. Uh, let me see. Share. Do you see? Yeah, I see my face. I'm just gonna make my face smaller. So okay. I don't see you. Oh, I'm just gonna keep it there for later. Okay, just okay. It can be smaller. No. Oh yes, really small there. So it's not <laughs> annoying. Yeah. Ready. Cool. And you see my screen, right? Yeah, I see perfect. Great. So at the bottom, we can put uh, the idea of trust between the. It's not Trump, it's trust. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so the first level of building like a cohesive team is this if you don't have trust between the team members, it's you cannot achieve anything else. Um, and then the, if you have trust, it's very easy to go to the next level, which is uh, uh, not fearing conflict. Basically going into meetings and saying what you really think about something without fear of, uh, of conflict. And basically uh, the whole team can discuss ideas and issues openly. Um, so yeah, I'll put conflict here. And I don't know, I have been in a lot of teams where people hold off to, oh. to ideas and, and if something is wrong, they don't say it because why should they say it, right? And it's usually because there is no trust that whatever they come up with uh, can be resolved. Yeah. So I have experienced this a lot in, in studios where even though there are problems, we don't talk about them. It's like taboo. Uh, they're taboo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The... I, I, I I feel here in Japan is also like similar situation. Like uh, sometimes it's um um it's it's hard to disagree. <laughs> let's say. Exactly. But that's uh, more a cultural thing there, right? <laughs> yeah. Because I have a lot of. Japanese friends and uh, I love them. It's just when I cook dinner, I don't really know if they liked my dinner or not. It's really hard to say. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, like I'm from Eastern Europe. I can, I'm much more open than, uh, yeah. uh, than usual. Sometimes it's too much. <laughs> I, I feel well, I, I think the Spanish are in the same bag on there, like in the same package. Yeah, maybe yeah. The, the south you go in in, uh, in in Europe, you become more, you yeah. know, direct. <laughs> yeah, he, here, yeah, it's very respectful, and that honestly, I love. I really love the how how respectful is the people here and the cultural and everything. Uh, uh, but yeah, sometimes yeah, it's, it's, it's needed some like dissonant also in the in the, the meetings or 
you know so not always mm. agree a good like uh discussion or uh, like contradictory approach for something it's it's better to get the best one yeah yeah and uh, sorry i didn't want to interrupt you no no it's pretty interesting because i have observed uh, this difference in cultures and um sometimes uh, yeah you have to you have to know that that people are just different and uh and yeah knowing the differences help a lot yeah absolutely i agree with that but i really love it i mean i i, I know uh for beginners that doesn't like that at all and and i say look i'm, I'm really happy here <laughs> and i think it's just to you need to understand that it's how it works and and it has all, a lot of advantages but normally people tends to see only the disadvantage let's say the mm -hmm. the the like the the ugly part of everything and cannot see the beautiful part of of the same thing you know so everything has these two faces or like it's 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 not black and white it's it's just something yeah. in between and these shadows are are nice to to get like uh, contrast i, I yeah. completely agree yeah um uh, we are never <laughs> black and white, like you said. Yeah. Uh, we're we're mix. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. So you were saying, like, is the 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 trust conflict and what will be the yeah, next so thing? Yeah. So the yeah the once you have these two levels kind of established in the team, uh, then you can talk about commitment. <clears throat> so. I'll type this here. Um, and the idea here is how do we usually take decisions in teams? If you think about it, um, even like in healthy teams, you have this idea of um, disagree and commit. Basically, even though we have different uh, ideas how something should be accomplished, how a certain problem should be resolved. At the end of the day, we have to take one decision, and this decision might not be liked by some in the team. But having these two levels here allows you to, um, especially if you have trust between the team members, you can have a decision taken by everyone and everyone commits to it. So um, there is no way that you always have, uh, you know, like everyone will agree about how certain things should be done. But at the end of the day, once having these two levels in your team, you can have uh, a commitment from everyone that, that what you're uh, going to do is actually agreed upon. Um, and here is something I, I've seen people, like if you think about how we make decisions in teams, uh, it's usually either one way, which is the hierarchical command and control type of <laughs> decision making <laughs> where uh, I as a supervisor will tell my team what to do and they will execute, right? Yeah. Um, and that's like, okay. Here is one person, and this is the team. Um, so yeah, that's one one way of making decisions, which we know about. Like we know this from schools, we know this from um, from work environment. The other way of taking decisions that we also know is kind of more democratic, where we are all discussing something and then. In order for us to make a decision, we we all have to agree on on the decision. And if someone doesn't agree, then it's not taken. So we need like complete consensus between uh, the decision. And what I found is neither of this is good. In fact, mm, there are pros and cons about each other, uh, each uh, way of taking decisions. Like here on the left, uh, it's very fast. Like you can basically issue a command and uh, whatever uh, 
um, you say that will be done, right? Uh, but this leads to disengagement from your employees, uh, kind of. Like most of the time, they won't be committed to that decision because they're not involved uh, in any way in uh, even giving advice about the decision, right? Um, now, on the other hand, here, everyone can say what they think, but it's usually very slow and in fact, I think it's even worse than the first one. Sometimes, like it can go forever mm -hmm. talking about something, and you never uh, get to a decision. Um, and with the two companies we started, I we we started using another method, uh, which I found it to be kind of taking the pros from both two methods. Um, and this is the idea of, um, some people call it the advice process, or it has different names. Um, but the idea is, well, we as a team will kind of go in circle and say our uh, what we basically think about the decision, we'll give our um, you know, thoughts about it. Uh, but we will also elect someone that will make the final decision. And that's usually done through different ways. Like it can, we can do it on the spot or maybe the leader in the team will also do it. But the important part here is the leader really actively listening to the advices that they get. Mm -hmm. um, and then saying, okay, I heard everybody. Uh, and I think we should go in this way, basically. Mm -hmm. Now, what this gives you is the benefit of it being very fast. Although it, people think it doesn't take, uh, it takes a lot of time to do this. It actually might take you like 10 minutes to listen to everyone. Uh, so it is fast. And, but it also gives the option everyone to be heard and, uh, and that's, that's the main important part. Basically, when people feel hurt, um, it's much easier for them to, to commit to a decision, even though the decision that was taken is not particularly what they, they want to go with. Um, and yeah, that approach, like it, basically you can use the three, three methods. It's uh, think about them as, uh, as tools, really. Mm -hmm. um, you can use this tool or that tool or the other two, but uh, it's much... I found the third one to be, you know, to works uh, quite quite well, actually. Uh, yeah, I think it's... Yeah, it's for... I, I, I like the idea a lot. I mean, like, to, to listen to everybody, because everybody has good ideas and can, can add to the decision, but yeah. had someone to take responsibility to, to take the final decision and don't don't stack the the conversation there and and keep moving forward like you have yeah. this kind of person like oh that make the the final decision it's is the best i think because the, the worst scenario for me as you say is, is the in the scenario that you don't take any decision yeah, i mean exactly. the, the the one that is kind of uh like one person takes any every, all decisions without any any uh, like uh, advice from any, uh, anybody that one yeah it's a typical like dictatorial let's say <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> uh, approach but um, unless you move forward it's yeah. it's not good but you move forward maybe you yeah. move forward in the wrong direction that's another story you move forward yeah. but yeah when it's everybody needs to agree uh, that can be uh very very difficult and yeah yeah and so, frustrating sometimes yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah but, i agree yeah and i think yeah the the one that takes this like uh advice and i think in in pixar they use something similar they call it trust Brain, yeah, exactly. Brain trust. Like uh, yeah, the really... brain trust. That's, yeah. that's exactly the same thing, actually. It's um, they just give advice to each other, and at the end of the day, um, the director decides how to move forward. But they have 
all this in place before that. Yeah. You know? So yes. they really trust each other. Uh, they also engage in conflict a lot. Like mm -hmm. if you um, read uh, the book about Pixar, you'll see. Like it's talked about a lot. Yeah, I read it. Um... But sometimes I go, I don't remember everything. I, I remember I read it like, like, you know, in one sit almost like. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, my, my, my uh, retention is not that good, but I remember that part, the brain uh, mm -hmm. trust thing. Yeah, exactly. Very yeah. interesting. And when you, you, you say commitment, it's like that all the members on the team are, they has this commitment to make this best they can to yeah to so, to, to to do the work or to do the the project no. yeah i mean many many teams in uh for example amazon have this one of their main rules is uh, disagree and commit uh basically we are free to disagree but at the end of the day we have to commit to whatever was decided mm -hmm. um and uh, I mean, that has to be kind of part of the culture. Otherwise, you always have uh, people kind of rebelling <laughs> against the decision. And that's another thing that I have observed a lot in studios where some decision is made, but some group of people is kind of, you know, going against it almost, like uh, trying to sabotage it or something. Mm -hmm. um, and but that's normal if you don't have um, trust between the team and and um, and if the team doesn't engage in this conflict. Yeah, yeah, it's important to be clear also, like uh, like your position or mm -hmm. like your idea on when you work in them because I think it's not healthy also to to keep it for yourself like you that you don't agree. You know what I mean, like. I think it's yeah. it, it's good to say I don't agree. I'm gonna do it, but I don't agree. And I, yeah. and the person who is taking the decision, like say, okay, I acknowledge that. But yeah, it's uh, it's good to know that you don't don't agree. But let's do it, <laughs> you know. Yes. So yeah, exactly. And and try to balance these uh, like uh, I don't know energies. <laughs> I don't know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that's cool, because the um. Yeah. Also, other side of the commitment, I think it's like I've been in teams like from like when I had my my own studio, or like in, in many places, like that. Also, the commitment on the members of the team is not the same. Like, and when I mean commitment, it's also like the, the uh, there is always. I mean, for my experience, sometimes there is people that they just show up and they have thousand excuses to don't do the work that they they have to and they overcharge the other mm -hmm. team members with uh, extra tasks because you know they don't uh, I, I'm not talking about like skills I'm talking about like uh, yeah commitment I think is the, the best word to to do the <laughs> things you know like it, and it's not even don't agree it's just like uh, Maybe lack of professionality, I will say, in some situations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In, uh, do you had this experience with uh, team members that you you felt like they are not like interested in the work or not? Um... Yeah, but that's uh, that's kind of also very easily resolved if you if if they trust you. Like they can be really open with you, uh, and I, I don't know. I had a lot of, I had to deal with many people who are just not passionate about what they do, and uh, maybe what they're doing is not for them at the end of the day. Um, yeah. But that's uh, so something I found that, at least for me, worked really well once I. Uh, understood how it's done is uh, have you heard about like what coaching is or like how how is that conversation done because it's a skill that uh, for example Google made this 
huge research about all their teams and all their managers, and they found that the best manager is the one who is also a coach. And at the beginning, I didn't know like what that even means, like what is a coach uh, yeah. or what is coaching. And yeah, um, yeah for sure, I, I I heard the the term and I the coaching and yeah. But to be honest, I I'm not hundred percent sure what it means. So... Yeah, so I can explain it. It's uh, it, it's quite uh, interesting. So it's not um, it's not me telling you how to solve your problems. It is me helping you solve your problems by yourself. So basically, me as a coach, I ask you a lot of questions, but I I give you no answers. Um, and through this process, you actually find something about you, if the coaching session was successful, that stops you from achieving the results you want. Um, and I really like recommend there is this great company called uh, Tough Leadership. They do trainings mm -hmm. for managers where they teach you exactly this skill um, and many others. So it's a Swedish company and it's a four day training. You do two days uh, one month and uh, another two days another month because it's super exhausting. Uh, so two days straight, uh, it's practical, like one to one, uh, like they put you on the spot on an actual chair and you have to act as though you're you know, in that situation mm -hmm. and what are you going to do? So it's like a really <laughs> great like crash course into management. Mm -hmm. uh, and and the skill they teach a lot is uh, coaching. Mm. Um, yeah, that's interesting. I, I, I was not uh, managing any team uh, when I was at, at Marsa and my previous company. Mm -hmm. um, but I, my manager actually, and some people on the, uh, like all the managers on different departments, I remember they had uh, like this kind of training sessions for coaching and uh, for team management. Like mm. they, with... Uh, That's very interesting, yeah. Yeah, I, because it was in Japanese, so I didn't grasp all the information that uh, our manager shared with us. But he, he, yeah, I think they was getting this kind of training from mm -hmm. the company. Yeah, I I really think most like that's an essential kind of skill, maybe to have uh, all managers to have because it's um, yeah. I don't know it solves a lot of uh, interesting uh, issues and problems. Yeah, yeah. I, I and and this is if I mean if you don't have uh, like this uh, coaching or uh, someone who can I mean you, you, this training or someone who can coach you, but one from my experience one thing that sometimes work and it's like it's similar i i didn't but now i think it it makes sense is like when you have a problem like let's say mm -hmm. like technical problem or how to solve something and it, sometimes you just start in a conversation with a colleague and trying to explain the problem that mm -hmm. raise some questions and by processing this this way the problem you get your own solution I and mean, it happened to me a few times that explaining uh -huh. yeah <laughs> what was going on i find out the solution and and say the only thing that i needed someone to listen to me and and try to explain yeah. it and then you 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 get the solution i think this is i mean the the, the process looks similar or uh uh, I kind of uh, actually the, what you're talking about is uh, do you know that it has uh, the, a term called rubber ducking rubber duck uh, debugging rubber duck <laughs> no uh, yeah you can you can read it on Wikipedia it's actually like actually how it works is you get a rubber duck rubber you put it next to you yeah duck a real debugging. real rubber duck <laughs> and you put it next to you and you explain to the ducky, your problem. <laughs> and by doing this, you solve your own problem. You know? oh, man. And 
<laughs> so it, that's funny. That, that's not, that's <laughs> actually true. I have tried it. It works. Uh, and it can be any other uh, rubber animal, or it can be anything. I, uh, I use this guy, you know, from Rio. Yeah. Do you see? <laughs> um, which one? The the the, the parrot. The, the blue parrot. Yeah. yeah cool. <laughs> 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 yeah that's nice yeah the uh, well i know no i never heard that one i just you know the term duck typing it's the only uh -huh, thing yeah, i heard different. but it's different of course <laughs> that's not the same <laughs> yeah yeah it it uh it exists but that's not uh it maybe it has some similarities yeah but uh how a coaching session goes is uh basically the coachee needs to come and knows how the process works because if they haven't done it it's a little weird mm -hmm. um so maybe yeah you can explain how it works before that but they have to come to you and say okay i need coaching in uh, whatever <laughs> uh, to solve this specific problem and there is always a problem that we focus on in the session um and and the coach usually asks a lot of questions and at the end the coach he has very like a solution to the problem which comes from them and they own it and it's their own uh, solution it nobody gave them the solution mm. you know uh, and that's always much better than someone telling you oh, i think you should do this yeah i think it's the way you learn the things if you if you think yeah, that the base exactly. like everything you can watch thousand tutorials read a thousand books go to thousand uh like workshops at the end only if you do it it's when you're gonna learn for real the thing whatever is mm -hmm. it it doesn't matter yeah. and i think yeah when you s come here with the coaching it's it's similar it's you need to come with the solution by yourself so it's gonna be the best solution for you if you if you 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 have a recipe uh like a boiler play from someone else it's not gonna be the same i don't know mm -hmm. yeah i feel yeah. that and i also maybe should talk about like i found at the beginning when i like in my first you know thinking about this like how to be a better manager i didn't make the difference between um an employee lacking the technical skills mm -hmm. and an employee lacking the um how can i say they're like um, basically lacking the uh, oh man my words are escaping me um like motivation uh, or something like that yeah yeah motivation or believing in themselves uh... that's what I mean. Like, self, like sometimes self people trust. come to yeah. you and say, uh, I'm not sure I can do this. Uh, and then you have to really understand like, where are they coming from? Do they don't have the skills to do it or they don't have the, you know, uh, the passion, the whatever. It's something else rather than the skills. Mm, uh, yeah, like self-trust is sometimes like maybe yeah. they have the solution, but they are not confident. Uh, exactly. that it's the right one and they need some kind of like uh like it's approval just... or you know yeah. kind yeah. of like uh yeah like i don't know yeah also my my words escaping but you know someone who who confirm like confirmation i will say like it's, some kind of confirmation yeah, exactly. not approval but yeah something like i'm not crazy that's actually something that may work yeah uh -huh. So, uh, so when we talk about this, uh, you know, coaching, it doesn't work uh, for lack of technical skills. Like if somebody doesn't know how to do something, uh, there is no point in doing that because there is just, there is no solution they will come with. Mm -hmm. So you have to actually explain them how it's done uh, as a technical professional or like better in the field that you're uh, you know, like if you're a supervisor in rigging, then you have to explain them the uh, rigging skills behind it. Uh, but for me, it was hard to understand. Like when somebody comes and says, I don't know if I can do this. Like, what do they really mean? Like they don't know like how to do it or they fear that 
whatever they want to do is mm. not the right thing yeah yeah that's um yeah i think there's a lot of also like these um imposter syndromes always it's uh, oh, lurking yeah. oh man that's, that's <laughs> huge for me at least that uh, has always been one of the main uh things that are stopping me from <laughs> doing better work yeah yeah for me it's always the same it's i, I feel like i don't know anything all the time and <laughs> yeah it's right. uh yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're trying to learn more, and you feel, oh no, I, I no, I, I know that I, I need to learn much more. So, yeah. you feel more, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, more uh, like, uh, and like, what well, is not confident, <laughs> and, and yeah, unconfident. I, I, I don't know how to say that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's uh, indeed. Yeah, it's something. So I'm taking notes here on this. Um, do you do you think there is any any book or any other reference that the people can can get access m maybe more easily than the tough leadership uh, uh, for day training? Yeah, because... for sure. There are many books on. Well, I mean that's very specific about coaching uh, and yeah, I guess coaching. Um, there. Are like for example what we are currently talking about there is a great book from patrick lencioni i'll write him here oh great thank you uh i'm not sure if it's ck or just k uh, we right, can like google it later and i will add it to the uh podcast notes so yeah so uh basically he talks about this uh and he has this pyramid of how to build like a cohesive team. Uh, he calls them the five dysfunctions of a team. These functions. Yeah. Uh, and I think it's a great way to visualize like what's the most common problems that we see in, uh, in the culture of teams, you know? Uh, so these are only three. We have to talk about the other two. Uh, maybe we maybe we can continue now. <laughs> and all this falls in the let's say the area of team building, right now. Or you I, think this is that's how I? Well, I mean, I, honestly, I don't know how to like. Where do you draw the line? Because yeah, you're right. Yeah, this it's kind of intertwined. In, yeah. uh, in a way, uh, maybe after all this, we can talk about specific skills that we, de we I feel it's better if we develop as managers. Um, and that goes into the category of, you know, leading the team. Um, but yeah, that's maybe we can put it in that bucket of team building or like I call it culture. Uh, although it's very invisible thing, I don't know. <laughs> um, but yeah, so w once you have um, basically commitment and uh, like when we have decided what to do, then it's very easy to have accountability. Um, someone is accountable for something, right? And you cannot have this unless you have the other three. Um, and then you can say, well, you were were accountable for this. You promised you will do it and you didn't do it. Uh, so what happened there? Uh, it's much easier to give feedback uh, when you, uh, you know, when you're at this stage. Mm -hmm. And yeah, feedback is another topic we can also touch base on uh, because I feel managers just don't, they give feedback once a year and that's not how you do feedback. <laughs> uh, and then the last one is basically results, like the whole team is result oriented when you met all of these. Um, and it accomplishes much more at the end of the day. Yeah. And yeah, so again, Patrick Lencioni 
or Lencioni, I'm not sure how it, the name is pronounced. Um, he talks about these five dysfunctions. He has a very nice book about it. Um, it's very short and informative. I feel that's a great resource to have. Cool. Yeah, I will. I will go later on that for sure. Mm -hmm. Interesting, indeed. It's um, yeah, results. So that's yeah, results are. Always, I I always feel like, especially uh, well, uh, many like, let's say, um, intellectual labor. I I think we mm -hmm. can call it like that. Like something that it's more like. Not how many hours do you spend sometimes, but sometimes it's about like the final results. It doesn't matter. So in animation, sadly, it's a lot of hours. Yeah. For it. But not always. Like it's um, it's uh, it's about the hours that you put. Or sometimes, especially, for instance, for I feel like in coding or developing. Mm -hmm. uh, you, unless in my side I spend much more time thinking and yeah maybe like I don't know cooking the idea behind and thinking how to organize them then actually coding like sit yeah, yeah. on the computer and just crunching the keyboard to, yeah, to speed exactly. up something and I think this is like something on the results that it's important like it's not like like it, yeah, I feel I feel the same way. Sometimes, uh, I mean, like you said, doing less hours uh, actually is more productive than doing more. But if you have thought about it and not just blindly, you know, uh, struggled and put <laughs> hours yeah. into it. Yeah, exactly. So, I think that's important. Sometimes that when you manage the team, the like. Or, or like the team sometimes the people looks like they are not doing anything but you have this uh this uh, like trust and this uh you know the commitment of the people so if you good manager or like you should not be like i mean it's important the accountability but i think not, not fiscalize i think that's a word i don't know if it's a mm -hmm. word or like you know like going and they like what are you doing like well you know maybe they're they're like staring at the screen or doing or <laughs> things like that <laughs> no yeah. I, I, and i hear like st even studios that they have some kind of like software that they detect if you don't move the mouse for a while or things like that and that's Man, wrong like... that's wrong because m sometimes the people is i mean working yeah that's <laughs> lack of trust and exactly. also it's like it's it's a mental work many times like if it's an animator for instance it may be thinking about his uh animation it's it's like interiorizing the the feelings of the character to to make a nice acting i mean can be a thousand things that they are actively working and probably they work after the 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 work hours or before you know because they they, yeah, they keep thinking yeah. about that and then they they um let's say they they print the result maybe it looks like it did it fast but it was not it was a long process i remember i think uh was I, i'm probably i'm chopping this but i think it was philip stark do you know the um it's very famous uh like um like uh, well uh, industrial designer uh i'm not sure uh, what, how do you Phil, spell your name? I think it's Philip Philip Stark. It's I think it's French. Mm. Uh, maybe I'm I'm just butchering everything here because I'm I'm, I'm ignorant person. But the no, I think it, I I remember in one of the interviews that it it just take a paper and design whatever. Like uh, it has a famous like um, I I don't know how you call it, like the machine that you do the orange juice thing. The uh -huh, yeah okay yeah. I don't know a squeezer. It, a squeezer yeah exactly. Yeah. It has a very famous squeezer, and it, 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 it did in five minutes, and it, I mean, it charged for this like a lot of money, like for <laughs> the designer. And someone comes to him and say, like, do you do you draw this in five minutes in a in a paper, and you want to charge me like I don't know how much charge? No, he say, yeah, no, I, yeah. I I I I I render it this in five minutes here, but it took me twenty years 
of hard work <laughs> to render in five minutes. You know? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. I mean, that's yeah, so that's you're not paying true. for the five minutes here. You're paying for the twenty years that I was yeah, yeah. working hard to, to do that. Yeah, man, that's uh, another topic which it's very interesting. Like now, when I work as a freelancer, mm -hmm. like it's very hard to come up with how much you cost. Like, how do you price yourself? Yeah, uh, because it comes with your experience like how do you measure that uh, most people or clients that come to you i mean honestly i don't know they don't care that much about how much you struggled during the years they want to see the results you did and uh, yeah and if it's possible to be cheaper <laughs> yeah uh, that's you'll a... see like maybe we can do you want to move forward a little bit on uh, more like the the other part, like more like pure management and yeah. like um, maybe some, do you think we can go some like maybe practical advice? I don't know if practical advice, but something like more like boilerplate. <laughs> no, it sounds sorry no. about boilerplate. <laughs> yeah, I actually, yes, I, I can give you a practical advice <laughs> okay cool i mean uh let's see here is another another page another drawing uh, so something i i see a lot of managers do uh, and uh, you know it it's hard to get away from that because we are in schools we are taught like that and then in companies we work the same way so uh it's the idea where basically the relationship between a manager and employee is like a parent and a child if you think about it mm -hmm. um so we kind of as a manager expect to have answers for everything um, and the employee is someone that you know is not that experienced so we have to teach them we have to empower them like we use all these uh, words that kind of put us in this relationship of parent and child uh, and I can argue that that's not very good neither for the manager or for the employees. Uh, what's better if we, if we kind of manage, for, manage from more like adult to adult relationship. So we are kind of on the same level here. Uh, and I can draw a parallel between like for those of us who are also like parents um how do you actually how are you a good parent like if your child for example says uh is in front of a i don't know a river and they are kind of afraid to jump so they don't get wet um you can kind of see this fear in them and and encourage them and like the you can uh, make them be more independable, like uh, independent. So you don't try to be this always a parent to them, but in order for them to grow and be their own human being, you have to let them go, kind of be themselves, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so it's always this struggle between, okay, should I take care of them or should I make them more independent uh, but the same approach applies to uh, in companies like even though we have this feeling that uh, you know trying to, to make your child more independent is good for them we do exactly the opposite at work sometimes we design processes where we uh, reinforce this parent-child relationship more than actually making us you know at the same level uh, and uh, maybe as a brain exercise for everybody listening 
uh, think about uh, your like your company where you are. It doesn't matter if you are a manager or not. But think about a process which kind of reinforces this parent-child relationship at work and try to convert it like the same process uh, but try to design it in a way where it uh, goes away from this paradigm and goes to this paradigm. Um, just an example that, that might not be relevant to any of you, but example is uh, me as a rigger uh, in a company. I'm not allowed to publish my rig until my supervisor checks it. Um, okay, that's has a very particular goal, which is QC, like quality control, right? But the way it's designed, like the process itself, is like reinforcing this parent-child relationship. Like it always, okay, my parent has to check uh, this for me because I'm not good enough. So it uh, forces us to think in a certain way. Now, the same process can be redesigned as a, a peer review process or like a code review where your uh, peers check uh, your code or rig and they give you feedback on it before you publish it. So it still achieves the same goal, which is quality control, uh, but it's, uh, it's you shift from uh, this site to this site. So yeah, as an exercise, just think about um, maybe having a, some process in your company which is on this side and try to move it on the other side. <laughs> Does it make sense? Yeah, absolutely. I think it makes a lot of sense. And yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I think I have to apply this one. <laughs> <laughs> we, we all do. That's the, that's the thing. Yeah. Um, and it's very hard. I have to say, even knowing this, I, it's very easy for me to be a, parent kind of and uh, if somebody comes with a specific problem it's very easy for me to solve it you know mm. uh, um. but i kind of have to stop myself from doing that like for example if my kid asks me hey daddy how should i do this i the first thing i need to think about is well he doesn't know or he doesn't have the skills to do it or he's afraid to do it again from this perspective of mm. uh, knowing the difference between uh, no having the experience or or having the fear and if he's fearful then i can encourage them and not give them answer straight away and try you know like sometimes i I would prefer them to fall down and see that, well, it's okay even if you fall down and hurt yourself rather than me holding them all the time. Mm. And yeah. um, they're not going to learn anything this way. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, sometimes, yeah, yeah, it's um, it's something that, yeah, I agree. I, I should do more of that. I should do. Mm. But it's sometimes it's, it's hard to... Uh, also like it just being like a devil advocate here sometimes especially if the production times are tight <laughs> and you don't have luxury to 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 let the person learn by by doing mistakes or yeah of course yeah then it's when you 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 yeah you you just uh do the other way and uh, knowing mm -hmm. that, yeah, it's bad, obviously, because it creates this dependency and this dependency is not good because it's always going to be relying on you, means you're going to be mm -hmm. overdrive with more responsibilities and tasks that instead of, yeah. like, like you say, like uh, empowering or teaching or, I don't know, l like being a good, like, mentor and, and, and let the people grow. Yeah, it, yeah. But... Yeah, it's always hard to get this uh, this balance between uh, reality, <laughs> yeah, totally. like in the production I, and 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 ideal uh, management and yeah, and, and team management. Yeah, that's uh, but obviously it's always ways to do it better. I, I'm not making an like an excuse, but 
yeah. Mm. Sometimes it's yeah, I understand. It's a bit tough yeah, to do that. Yeah, I. Uh, yeah, I, I. I'm trying like to be, like kind of confession here, like <laughs> try. <laughs> but it's yeah, okay. no, that's okay. That's 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 we that's what we're here. For. <laughs> I mean, I'm telling you, I struggled with this stuff a lot. It's not even though I'm like talking about them, I constantly make these mistakes. I mean, every day, it's kind of crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I, I had. Yeah, for me, it's like. Yeah, sometimes I, 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 I remember like some like top of my mind like situations where like yeah I, I. Even for me, like this parent relation, like someone comes with a, with a problem, X problem that I never solved also, and I say yeah I can do it for you, but I'm gonna go. On the same path that you're gonna have to do if you don't know how to do it because i you know what i mean like i will yeah. have to do some tests i don't have the answer now uh maybe i'm a bit faster than you to making the test or like goofing around with some ideas before i get something that works but i'm not i cannot give you any solution right now because i don't have it and then yeah. i am remembering like i encourage the people to okay i have this this maybe this path and maybe this path but without going so specific and yeah and in, in that situations i like the person did it the he found a solution that was working and and it was really sad i mean i don't know how to say it, like it was satisfactory for me in terms of like like to be happy for the person that get it, he did it, and I think it was good for for them because they the the mm -hmm. the person get more like uh, trust in himself and on his yeah. abilities. But also for me, like uh, first, I didn't have to to struggle myself to 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 yeah. find a solution to later like uh, regurgitate like the birds does with it, uh -huh. Uh -huh. and and give it to to the to the other person. But also, now, like in terms, of like, like, yeah, it's I can I know this I can now give or more uh, like challenges to this person because it, it's capable to you know what I mean like yeah yeah exactly it's like yeah. one up from <laughs> yeah yeah for I, the team. Uh, I have been in the same situation as well um, and like you said it's very it feels very nice somehow yeah. you know. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It feels very nice that you didn't do anything and still do it. <laughs> but, yeah. but it worked. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And yeah. yeah, yeah, it's great. Uh, it's a, it's exactly. a weird feeling, yeah. And now that I try to uh, rationalize it, <laughs> it's it's weird. <laughs> if you need to be there. Yeah. I mean, you need to be there to maybe to feel it. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> That's interesting. Cool. Thank you so much for this. Um, mm. Yeah, in terms of like, um, this is the other thing. Like, in terms of um, rigging management, I, I'm maybe going to more specifics uh, on day by day. Mm. Um, for for instance, and well, I don't know. Yeah, like for instance, for me, um, I I really like. Uh, on the the way that we work on the studio, it's like to avoid ownership on the that's mm -hmm. on the assets and things yeah. like that. So everybody can do everything, and we have this system standardized enough so yeah. the people can understand what the others did any moment, any time. Like, well, we maybe this is another conversation, like the all the data centric and. We, we had last week, I think, was this conversation on the custom steps and things like that. Maybe for mm -hmm. another episode, we can. Yeah, we, we can, can dig. discuss this. Yeah, I think yeah, because we, uh, for the people like just to put a little uh, antecedents on this, we we have a little uh, different point of view, I will say, or <laughs> we, we think. Yeah. But it was nice. It was nice. I think this this conversation we we had to repeat and maybe to. Uh, mm -hmm express uh again this because i think it's very interesting this this conversation but but yeah this is something that i really 
I think the especially in in um in rigging teams I've I've been in well, like in a few teams already like being a manager or being just like uh, one more on the team like with non uh, like managerial uh, responsibilities and all, everything in between and mm -hmm. the um, yeah that's some big I, I I found that in in some places like big issue like that the team like everybody has his own tax his own responsibility everything works really well but the problem is like everybody is, is like separate island by himself mm -hmm. in the, the, the yeah. work that they do so some people does only one specific part of the rig or does one mod one model of the production yeah so and that it's um it's bad on it well, unless my my opinion is that it's bad because mm -hmm. first each person tends to work by himself like with his own methods mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and sometimes don't share the methods between um, members of the team that it's horrible that like not not mm -hmm. sharing know-how or expertise it's it's bad yeah uh, but the, the reward situation is when for any reason this person is not on the team anymore or it's like in a sick day or mm -hmm just finish the contract or quit to another company or well it can can be a thousand so, um, reasons because it's not there for and you have a big big issue there with with the ongoing projects that you don't know what yes, the heck yes. do it and like it's it's like a nightmare i mean even your own rigs because there are like probably one of them in terms <laughs> of uh, I don't know complexity. I think can be can be pretty crazy, and y your own rig can be also like. Uh, I mean, if I take a rig like three years ago, and I if I didn't, I mean, if I did it by hand, that they then script everything and it had everything like data centric and uh, like that the can, I can understand how it builds, but something I did by hand, like like going with the flow, mm -hmm. it's super hard. It's super hard to, to remember what you did, why this thing is working, and you don't understand if the person <laughs> two years ago was smarter than the person that you are now, or <laughs> was it, I don't know. It, it's 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 a pretty pretty f like hard feeling like <laughs> to yeah, yeah. go there and what the heck what I was thinking or I was wow I was super smart I don't remember how I did this thing. <laughs> Well, if you you have like a methodology, even if you keep improving and changing the methodology, and and again this like data centric thing, it's for me it's way easier to take one rig from three years ago, open and just checking my my building steps, my my scripts and my data. Mm -hmm. I I it's way easier to understand because if it's I mean you know like coding, if you can comment your code and everything, but if it's simple enough and it's not like um, convoluted you can open like any script or uh, like any any program and you can go through the to the code and understand what is doing the code and you know mm -hmm. so that's the, the advantage for me noddling in a graph editor and trying to understand what the heck I did like checking all the attributes editor for per node because I you don't know what is inside and it's configuration of each node it can be nightmare <laughs> i agree yeah, yeah. no I, um, yeah what you were saying that designing the processes at work to allow for anyone to step in and kind of do and finish someone else's work i am a big proponent for that i actually think that's great uh, it also kind of um, makes the team feel like they're playing the same game if you know what i mean it's yeah. not yeah like you like you said there are people who are just you know in their own cubicle staying there doing their work i don't think that's good for any you know, yeah. you know for anyone yeah so 
the the other thing you know, the other advantage it's like in uh, resource management if you mm -hmm. for me it's um i don't know if you you had the same experience but um for instance you have uh another situation we have several projects going at the same time in in many many months of the year so it's it it's mm -hmm. strange that we have only one project running so and the if you have this ownership for the asset or for the the part let's say i do facial and i do corrective lens shapes for instance it's because mm -hmm. um the thing is of course it's good to have some kind of expertise in some area so uh, not everybody has same uh, like skills or same experience so some people is better doing certain parts of the process that's also mm -hmm. you need to acknowledge that but at the same time if only does that part means that in some some days or some hours this person is not gonna have anything to do and some other colleagues they're gonna be completely over over dr uh, drive with uh thousand uh task to do mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. and that that's bad because for one side y y the team is unbalanced some people is doing more work sometimes and some others other time i'm not saying like uh everybody some people is not doing anything ever or but you know it's gonna be like uh, more taxing for for the energy of the people and if it's like a long running project like let's say like TV series or movie production that can go for months or years, it can be very taxing for for the the person. Mm -hmm. And the um, the other thing, it's like because you have people on your team that it's waiting, and some people it's doing all the tasks. So you you bottleneck your pipeline, you bottleneck, mm -hmm. and it's like you have some. Um, like a, if I can make a comparison with a, a multi-thread computer, but you know yeah. multi-threading, you just yeah. <laughs> have single thread for one thing and single thread for the other thing, and the rest of your cores are just idle there, wasting yeah, exactly. energy and time. So same thing. I, I think mm -hmm. it's a yeah maybe the the yeah the the multi-threading concept. It's something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna multi-thread team. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's mean, the other advantage that I think it's it's very important. Not only. I uh, yeah, I also would like to add that uh, if, for example, you find something that uh, works for your team, for your situation, uh, or for your particular studio you work at. It doesn't mean that it will also work in another setting or another studio. Yeah. Uh, in fact, I have found that I think studios copy too much each other in mm. some way. Like yeah. it's pretty much organized the same way anywhere you go, uh, with very minor, you know, differences, and mostly they're like in the pipeline, but not in the organizational structure. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that said, there are a few studios that do, do organize completely differently. Uh, for some reason, it works for them. Uh, in fact, uh, these studios are very successful. Um, mm. Like one studio I've studied, how they've done things, is Valve. Another one is uh, Supercell. Both of them are kind of example of, I mean, they just decided to organized differently, not how others are doing it. Mm -hmm. um, and again, it works for them. That doesn't mean it will work for others. Uh, I just want to see more experimentation, you know, like people mm -hmm. trying different processes at work, different uh, things that make sense. Yeah, yeah, this is, uh, for instance, yeah, one of the, one of the problems that we have and that's it's it's very difficult it's like each for instance if you have multi multi project uh mm -hmm. like uh, in, in the same at the same time the the way that the, like production management organize the budget the budgeting for the projects is like man month for instance and they like the idea that oh this and these people is gonna be assigned to this project and this and these people is gonna be assigned to this project 
Mm -hmm. And it is very easy to manage this in uh, like, let's say this, this like budgeting and uh, like production part of the, the things. But if you think like, okay, let's say I, uh, yeah, everybody's in a, every project and you mm -hmm. jump from one project to another is when, for instance, it can be very difficult to, to, to track that. Yeah. yeah, or we, to switch. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, we use like a like a, a tracking um, application for time. It's called uh, Clockify, but not to fiscalize uh -huh. the the person. Indeed, we track the 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 asset itself, so not the the tasks. So what we get it's at the end of the each show of each project we have like a this is the amount of hours that we put in this rig and this is the amount of hours that we put in this rig. Mm -hmm. Who did it? I mean, we don't care because this mm -hmm. rig probably is being touched by every single person on their on the team. Mm -hmm. What mm -hmm. we need to know is the 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 final numbers so we can budget correctly and I for see. the next yeah. project also to have a good balance because that's another yeah, just jumping or to another topic like and this is something that I would like to know your experience here because um, it's for me it's it's probably one of the hardest things to do. It's the um, budgeting for uh, mm. for projects <laughs> when each person. I mean, as I say, like everybody can do everything, but each person has different skills, different uh, experience levels. So for me, I know when I was freelancing. I checked the designs, I checked the requirements that was um, expected from the animation team and the, the project, and you can calculate a budget, okay, this is going to take me that this time. But when yeah. you're working with a team, and everybody has different, different yeah. uh, like speed to work and everything, and how you, how you budget that? I mean, that's, <laughs> yeah. Uh... Here, here, I I don't know. I I have a very different view about this, and that's one of the reasons I I kind of went away from studios and started my own companies because I don't agree on the uh, way we are doing it. Mm -hmm. um, and it just comes from a very simple truth, which is you cannot predict. Uh, you cannot estimate um, job or like work that is not estimatable. Like uh, in the nature of our work, it uh, there is unpredictable. Like there is no pre you cannot predict um, like artistic or any of these things that are involved in the work we do. Yeah. So there. Like I've seen other methods which for me work better, uh, but they require, you know, the whole studio to be on board uh, on that. Like one method which I found works uh, is, have you heard about uh, this company? Um, uh, what was the name? Uh, just a second, let me Google them. Uh, base camp. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard about. Yeah, so uh, the CTO of Base Camp is DHH uh, David Heinemar Hansen, and he basically uh, he's very active on Twitter. Mm -hmm. He's a loudmouth like myself, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and but he. He talks about the same thing, which is you cannot estimate uh, how much a certain feature will take. Like, how much will this feature take? Is it like two hours? I mean, it can take two hours. It can take uh, two days. It can take uh, two months. Uh, so the way they budget things, if you can call it that, uh, in Basecamp is uh, in another method, which is... Uh, they explained it in a free book online. Uh, it's very detailed how they approach it. But the idea is this, how much <clears throat> actually, <clears throat> sorry, 
how much time are we willing to spend on this asset, for example, or this feature, uh, and then coming up with the best version of this rig or asset or feature based on the time we want to spend on this. Yeah. So it's kind of going backwards, like, okay, here is the time constraints. Yeah. Uh, this is the things we want. Uh, let's just deliver the best version of yeah of this you know yeah and actually that is what happened at the end oh <laughs> uh, yeah <laughs> yeah it's always uh because we we unless we try to 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 give an estimate and this is and now i mean we uh, and with this company i've been like at almost three years now and uh, mm. the team like we know each other now but we can roughly estimate how much it takes to make the first deliverable but know yeah. how much it takes to finish the rig you know yeah <laughs> that is different yeah and now <clears throat> and yeah, yeah we keep we um, improving it, uh, yeah sorry yeah no no i was saying like we just keep doing until we run out of time like because we need to do <laughs> other rigs or because exactly. we need to finish the project so and it's never uh, just keep updating and dating from art direction to animation direction yeah. like any kind of change we throw it and uh we do it and as yeah. f as long as we still have time we we keep doing it yeah exactly i mean the only constraint you have is time at the end of the day yeah uh, and you know budget but it's actually time uh so i mean you can polish something until the end of the world like when does it stop uh you know like it's never going to be perfect yeah it's what you say that's just <laughs> like the uh, done is better than perfect yeah exactly at some point you have to say okay stuff and yeah. that's enough um but yeah. that's generally my experience and uh and this comes from this idea of again like uh, this questions that we have to ask ourselves, I think, which is where does management come from? Um, if you study the history of how it evolved during the years, you'll see that these ideas we have about management, I mean, they came from a very specific need in the industrial revolution uh, to organize people in factories together, right? Mm -hmm. but, but the type of work done in a factory is very different than the artistic type of work we do today. Um, and the main difference is predictability. Like in factory, you actually want it to be predictable. Uh, you want to know exactly how much this yeah. part takes to be built because it will be the same time today and tomorrow. Like you can optimize it, but it's very measurable. Like it's pretty much the same. Uh, but what about the rigs? I mean, it's you cannot measure how much one will take versus another. Like they might be completely different things, mm. completely different needs. Like it's not yeah. apples and apples. It's like I don't know apples and cars. It's <laughs> yeah. it's very very different. Yeah, absolutely. I I think. And yeah, and it, I mean, each production, it has different, um, like, uh, complexities and, and mm. they're, they, they are different. Some, some parts are same, but some parts are not. And in, in the same production, uh, you can have like rigs that are like easier and some that are not that easy or some like for instance if talking about more specifics like uh, projects that we do that we have like human characters mm -hmm. and then you have like monsters mm -hmm. so for humans you have a lot of automatization or, or standardization done so you can go faster and when you come a monster or like like say like a humanoid but with we are phase or whatever that you cannot reuse all your standards mm -hmm. it's when it it goes out of like uh it's super hard to to predict the the time yeah. or then but yeah you say like sometimes like yeah it comes the the production management or the the the, the producer say oh, 
I have to do these characters uh, uh, I don't know for next week uh, mm. how long is gonna take you mm. <laughs> uh, uh, for next week <laughs> yes you c can you do it yeah I can I mean I, I, you always can deliver something <laughs> yeah exactly but it's what you need is what it's it's gonna be okay for you <laughs> yeah I don't That's know what I but yeah, it's uh yeah, sometimes it's uh yeah. Can you do this Absolutely. when you need it? Just give me and, and this is something that that's funny. I don't know if it happened to you. Like in production, like in some situation it's hard to get a deadline. Yeah. Like like to uh, a clear answer from the the production like production I, want, people, yeah. I want this day. And you're gonna yeah. do whatever you can for this day. Instead it's like yeah, maybe and the a bit like even it's they have these gun charts that are amazing and keep changing uh -huh. every day. Yeah. Uh, don't don't get me started on how much I hate <laughs> gun charts. It's, it's I think right. that's the stupidest tool ever invented. <laughs> like uh, I mean, yeah. at the end of the day, you just shuffle stuff at, like every yeah. day. Oh, yeah. let's move this here, and maybe now we can move this here. And... Uh, yeah. We can make a full episode of rambling about gun charts and other Excel <laughs> management uh, approaches. Yeah. And now what I, what I do now is gun charts. I'm laughing, but you know. Right, but you doing gun uh, charts now? No, it's uh, you know, like once you start managing projects, you. <laughs> I mean, that's a good visualization too, at least. <laughs> Yeah. What I don't like about it is again from this uh, it comes from the idea that it's not predictable so you just end up moving it yeah. here and there, you know. Yeah, I like to indeed I have one for personal projects, my personal yeah. gun chart, but it see? I see it more like a, a wish list gun chart. <laughs> exactly. Right. <laughs> the best case scenario. Yeah, I would like to do all this then and then I keep changing it and then I'm not gonna yeah I can do a three episodes so my only one gun chart <laughs> that I do <laughs> just rumbling okay. myself against myself uh, yeah but this is something and maybe this is a little on a tangent but and this is something that I and, you know I'm I'm doing like part of my work at the studio i do um uh well the dm gear uh development and also mm -hmm. i'm i'm trying to do my own little projects and also mm -hmm. i want to do tutorials <laughs> to sell and things like that yeah. and and one thing i for instance on, on my little projects that i never finish um and the personal projects in general for for people like to having this kind of like this approach like base camp thing then where you think I have this time to do something I want to have it mm -hmm. for this day and then I hear like something like to having these kind of deadlines it's also I don't know like when you do something it's it's it it has like two 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 phases of the same coin like if you want to do something you need to put the lines if you don't have the yeah. lines you're not gonna finish anything ever yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> but then it comes to the reality of okay a realistic deadline what mm. means that and then if you keep pushing the deadline forever mm -hmm. uh it's like it's just you're yeah. creating method to stress yourself without <laughs> results yeah, yeah. That, that's I, I found like the best ways again to do these kind of measurements or like pre trying to predict stuff is uh, again trying to rely on your team like uh, I mean people have been doing that in agile for like years already like mm. uh, estimation poker and other I mean there are many methods of estimating how much a task might take right uh, and it has some good ideas I feel there like again but at the end of the day it comes to the the same thing it's not possible to predict it 100% you can have a best guess mm -hmm. yeah uh, but you know 
um that's yeah. that's all <laughs> yeah this is something i i think this is not exactly the same conversation but yeah personal projects management i'm taking note mm -hmm. and maybe i'm gonna do another like maybe video like on this thing like personal project management and and deadlines <laughs> <laughs> this is interesting. I, I, I heard some other podcasts, the people talking about these topics. And there is mm -hmm. some some interesting it's not agile, but there is some like ways to, to manage. Like if you're trying to do like a for instance, like a little short film or a little not even short, but just a little thing, image or you know, mm -hmm. something more more personal, uh that is not like it's not a team it's just you um okay. yeah yeah to 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 use like these kind of uh, deadlines and not springs but try to divide uh on stages your your project like for instance midpoints and midpoints of the midpoints and things like that so you divide mm -hmm. this and you can consider that like kind of springs and base of and you do evaluation of the progress for each mid midpoint mm -hmm. so you can assess yourself like with you going on track or you you um uh, you are completely out of uh, <laughs> the, the the schedule or the, the deadline you know yeah yeah because but yeah i think this is i'm sorry i'm just going in tangents come all the no, time no, that's, but that's i'm taking notes because... i'm taking notes mm. here my little posits now that i know <laughs> which part is the sticky one <laughs> <laughs> yeah i was yeah for the people don't don't know i was using the wrong way this this post it that's uh yeah that shows how smart i am <laughs> <laughs> anyway that's cool man um oh man uh, we found almost two one hour almost two hours we we're gonna reach Did into, you? well one one forty one hour forty oh, yeah. uh, oh, uh, man. fly but yeah um do you feel like maybe we we can start wrapping here maybe or maybe yeah, rambling for, for sure a few hours uh, more but yes um what time is it for you uh, <laughs> it's not 12 12 uh, past Damn. Third, like okay. midnight yes um it's okay i'm i'm unless i'm working from home now with all this madness of the barriers mm -hmm. so I, I i have a little more time to sleep because i don't have to commute that's great yeah oh so i that's love nice. it <laughs> yeah i love that part yeah. i think i'm i can get used to forever I, yeah no barriers i actually but... wanted to talk about remote pipelines but that's i don't know yeah. we went yeah too... sorry i don't know that's for another time <laughs> yeah we can talk on that um we did um on it's in japanese but at studio anima um we did well we quotes there i didn't do anything but my colleagues did a three pages post on how we did the remote work for the studio to work in i think we mm. implemented in less than a week nice um it's i mean it's not perfect but it's working for us uh yeah. so i will add it on the on the notes also on this uh, podcast and mm -hmm. you can use google translate so you just right click on your chrome or other uh, uh nav navigator they use and you can translate it and you get some some information there yeah it's very I'm interested to read it yeah yeah i think this they did a lot i i i use the google translate of course and they 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 put a lot of information like practical information with software names and issues and, mm -hmm. and everything it's not like just the nice you know sourcing management thing that i read sometimes like but don't give you the yeah. <laughs> the actual solution let's say <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah i agree okay. but yeah you see if you have a deadline to resolve this it was done in a week no it, 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 yeah around like it took like a week it was not like indeed we start preparing everything before the government asked to to please don't go on uh, -huh. uh yeah I mean, to, the, to the office so or but um but yeah it was 
perfect almost perfect timing like we we have it we was doing like some test and then last week was or was early this week when they said like let's take this more seriously and please don't go if you can avoid it and and then but everything was set in place already so the test mm -hmm. was uh kind of final indeed we cancel one one day that we should when like go back to the office with the, the the management decided that no just keep working from home so the test was the final <laughs> i see yeah that's great well and, and you can multitask on the meetings also it is great I... <laughs> yeah <laughs> You can work while you yeah talk. you're listening no 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 I don't talk but you can listen what the colleagues say while you keep working yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean depends cool. on the task of course thank you Marina and this is fantastic talk I think yeah, I learned thanks, a bunch of things I have a ton of notes here and I will add uh, some of the information on the comments and probably we have material to do like another episode or two of <laughs> talking about this <laughs> uh, thank you so much yeah thanks man it was very nice uh talking with you uh, hopefully yeah people will find it interesting